Crying is my love language. Not just kidding, my love language is words of affirmation. Um, what? I'm a writer. Well, you thought that I didn't get enough validation when I was little? I mean, it could be both. But I have my own validation. Like, I write myself my own letters. I write myself my own poetry. I figured boys are not gonna do this. So, I gotta, sometimes you gotta be your own boy. Or you gotta be your own girl. Uh, you gotta be your own romance. So, talking about social media, like, the best thing that you can do Actually, it's good. My ex is talking to me, like he's texting me right now. So it makes me look to this side where the camera is. So yeah, that's good, that's good. We gotta take advantage of the pain. So I don't look this side, I look this side. Even though I should ignore him, but whatever, I'm gonna keep staring. Boom, 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 fall in. Oh, that's not a... Ah, oh, I wish I don't get lies, holy. Where did this come from? Anyway, going back to the point that I was trying to make. Mm. What? This is what a thousand schools do on a daily basis. They're like, oh, you didn't get my class. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. And they still have their paychecks. Sorry, I was making a brief pause because my ex is calling. I don't know what he's calling for, you know? Just leave me alone, you're killing my vibe. So yeah, I had to pause, cause he messed with my heart, now he wants to mess with my economy, like, gosh, look at that. It's pretty messy over there. Like, I got my pills for when my lower tummy wants to murder me. Then I got um, some matches, not for the candles, for when I want to burn the house on fire because the pills don't work on my lower tummy. Uh, pain, my uh, cramps are really, really bad. It's because I have, uh, I think I have like a cyst, cysts, cysts, uh, yeah, that thing, those little balls. Um, he didn't have the balls to, uh, anyway, that's not the case, but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, what was I gonna, I was gonna say something. Yes, like as I was saying, I'm pretty messy overall. But I, I, I'll, I, I'll clean my Spotify uh, stuff and I'll try to lick it down because I have many, many playlists such as, um, the, the titles are very comforting actually. Like, um, they're mostly um, about crying I think it's a very universal thing. I mean, love is also a universal thing, but love is just another synonym of crying. So it works for everyone. So the last scene updates. I thought that if the, the last scene that you saw in the chat meant that the person was in the chat, in your chat, with your chat open, waiting for you to reply back. Do you know how freaking illusion that got me about like how I don't know illusion is that a word in English like illusional like high hopes it gave me about my crush back in fourth grade. I thought that he, I really thought that he was up till 10:30 the night before waiting for me to talk to him. I am so. Oh, I was so new. I was so clueless to that. You know when there's people who find out the meaning about a word and don't shut up ever since? Well, I was like that, but with the camera. When I knew that you could send pictures to people uh, through WhatsApp, I... I didn't stop. I, I would take pictures of everything and I would send it to my crush. Ah! And you know, back then there was no left on red, uh, like blue and all that kind of stuff. So I thought that he was reading me when he was online. I would crop pictures that, okay, this will sound creepy, okay? Like, don't click off the video, but I will crop pictures of his mom's Instagram because I was shy to ask him for a follow. So I was like, the natural thing is like to follow. Cause like over here we call him aunt. Oh yeah, my aunt. I, Cause like we know each other. It's a promotion of 50 people. We always hang out. Uh, 
back then the school forces you that if you have a party you need to invite the whole the whole promotion so like we all knew each other and i followed the mom because she was public obviously adults don't care about being private or i don't know back then they did or there wasn't that feature i don't know what it was but the thing is i had access to his pictures <laughs> And I would crop the pictures that he had with his family and I would only have his face and I would make a collage and that would be my lock screen, my home, my lock screen, not even my home screen, my lock screen, the one that everyone has access to if they see my phone. My password was an M traced. Oh my God. How did he not find out that I had a cross on him? I don't know. I don't know. This is Twitter. When I started using Twitter, I would tweet stuff to the members of One Direction. And I thought that adding them, like adding adding them, like blah, 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 their name, meant that they were gonna read it. It meant that it was like, a, for me, that was the equal of a DM. And I don't know how that makes sense or what was my logic behind it, but I thought that I was legit messaging them <laughs> and that they were replying back. Ah! Oh, but seriously, <laughs> oh my god, the first times I used social media were quite a, quite a ride. Also, if I have a relationship, like, if you're happy, then yeah, post it. But like, when I have a relationship, I try not to, um, like, keep the privacy in there, you know why? Because like, then one day you get pissed, you delete all the pictures, and they're like, oh no, we're back together. And then people are like, wait, what, 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 what happened? And it's like, it's not your relationship anymore, it's the relationship about the people because you're feeding them that. And then you forget about yourself, you forget about the stuff that you like, you forget about why you started the account. Like, it's, it's supposed to be your own personal account, it's not supposed to be a couple account. Like, you start losing your own self and people just get to know you for who you hang out with. I know that because that used to happen with me when I had a best, my best friend, like my female best friend, like everyone, everyone told me, uh, oh yeah, she's, she's, X person's best friend and I was like no I am my own person like <laughs> maybe you should get to know me instead of you know because like they knew my friend but they didn't know me they just knew me as the shadow of that friend uh and that can also happen in relationships more often than not and it can make your partner feel awful so <laughs> yeah like um and it can also make you lose yourself may lose track of time because it's like my best friend, she left school. I was so disoriented. I didn't know what to do anymore because every time that she was with me, she was always commanding me to do something. She was always telling me to follow her to something. And then I didn't have anyone to follow, basically. But I didn't like that either. She was a little bit bossy. <laughs> I, I wanted to do stuff with my own time, but since I was never allowed to, uh, yeah, she was a little bit... <clears throat> but I didn't have any friends, so I was like... I didn't conform. I actually did love her. It's just I didn't know any better. Um... <laughs> But the thing is that you start losing yourself because it's like then the whole purpose of the account is posting you and I, I'm all about being happy for other people's happiness but sometimes like that can be, that can come off like you're trying to like show off. It's like you have nothing else but that relationship and then when you don't have it anymore it's like you're empty inside like you don't, you don't even know what you were posting because everything you posted was about you guys and then it's like you don't have an account anymore uh, and and it's like why would you post stuff if, if you're not even sure that you're gonna last like you know what it, i mean you can do whatever you want i'm just i'm just giving it thighs because it's like it feels weird it feels awkward okay it does it does because it's like especially when you're posting 24 7 about your relationship and when you're making it everything about your relationship like <sighs> It's like it's supposed to be intimate like all those little letters those paragraphs like it's cool to show your people off but sometimes it's like go tell them in person first or something go make a little surprise for them alone i don't know i don't know maybe i just haven't had like a like a boyfriend that does that in public so that's why i'm a little bit against against it but because like you know how they well no well yeah they say that you don't actually learn stuff unless you suffer it in your own sh on your own skin so like when you are against something or where you don't like something i think that the best thing you can do is to try that thing so that you you can you can't say anything because you did it too <laughs> it makes you put yourself in the place and the position of the person that you are judging or whatever but like what i'm trying to say here is like a little advice i don't know because like I, I feel a little identified with that it's like you can you can lose track of like you don't even know and, and and I've seen it with other people and that's how I feel about other people when they post their relationships all the time. It's like, 
when they don't have it, it's like, okay, who are you? I mean, unless they do know who they are. I'm just saying that in case you get too accustomed to it being your whole identity, your whole personality is like your, your boyfriend, your, your girlfriend. Are, and once it's gone, what, what do I do now? Especially with, with like the public, that's why it's risky. Like all of these businesses based on couples, it's like, yeah, it's based on the cuteness. And then you start, the, 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 the relationship starts suffering because you have to sugarcoat it. You could be arguing, but hey, you gotta make that video. And it's like, that's not healthy for any of you guys. Cause it makes for fake memories. It makes for you not having the space or the time or the bonding that you deserve because you're pushing the agenda of having to, you know, uh, like, fill up your duty and the demand of the people because they want to see you they get they get fed with all that stuff and, and you know you also don't want to sell a fake image like all the time happy boyfriend girlfriend so i just i don't know i just like keeping it private sometimes maybe um so uh like whenever i travel to the united states it's like the first time that i figured because i didn't know about starbucks i mean i didn't have tumblr i guess it was like a big thing on tumblr and all that kind of stuff with the flower crowns and all that um i didn't know what starbucks was but when i figured uh, when i when i realized like i mean i didn't know that it was like a trend or something but i was like oh my gosh these drinks are so good like this place is so famous well seriously and i searched it up and it had a it had an app and the app had like stars so you bought like a bunch of starbucks they would get you like a free one or something like that and you, they, they have like a secret menu and i got like a double chin that year and stuff but it was the best year of my life like every single friday i would go with my friends um with my uh my, my my friends of utility and my friends of if you don't get what I'm saying you can go back you can you you can go watch uh, Amanda's video I think she's called Amanda I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly but I'm gonna leave it uh, down uh, yeah I'll I'll search for it but it's about loneliness and it's about friends based on you know your likes based on how you can use them basically like an exchange like a transaction she explains it a lot better um very cinematically <laughs> um, but um, um what I'm trying to say is that they were my friends because like we shared school together but you know those friends that are nothing more than that so and that's okay <laughs> it's expected um like once that common thing club or uh, workplace like that expires then the friendship dies with it <laughs> so uh but i would go with them um you know that i i, I see people that that are we're not that close I see them as opportunities to go out and buy food. Why? Because my parents don't let me go out by myself. So <laughs> I will latch on to you so that we can go get some lattes and stuff. <laughs> um, even though it, I, I stopped like drinking Starbucks because they were they are, they were like one hundred percent ice and zero percent actual drink. I will, I had to tell them, I mean, I, I had to start telling them, like, yeah, don't put ice on it. Because, like, you're robbing me, basically, if you put the, a bunch of ice and then, like, 10% what you're offering. So, uh, like, I wouldn't do that. I know that people are doing business, but I wouldn't do that. You're paying for a service, I'm going to give you the full service. So, so, um, yeah, like, I used to get, um... I, I got so excited about like the secret menu. I, I, I ordered the Ariana Grande Frappuccino all the freaking time and it had so many ingredients like people over here in Panama because like it's not that much like it's not that they don't know that much of that like you know like Starbucks culture or something like baristas like they just work in it as if it was any other cafeteria. But I bet like over there in the United States, like it's more like, oh, unicorn frappuccino, oh, pink drink, oh, this and that. Like they're not that aware of the trends and stuff. Uh, they just, you know, I guess they just do what they're told by the other, you know, by the company. Um, but yeah, like they were just like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> it was a time in which I used to wear cut ears a lot, cat ears and flower crowns. And we would go to the same Starbucks, yeah, like, as if it was a rom-com, but it was not because it's real life and real life sucks. Um, <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It does if you let it suck. Don't let it win. Don't let it win you over. You win over life okay <laughs> so um i got so excited about apps like that apps that were not available unless you have a vpn or something like that um i got excited about apps such as yelp uh we we have a similar one over here it's called degusta which is like degustar like tasting stuff tasting food um i know that yelp is all about like theater and, and like events and, and so many things that you can do in a place and it has all of that information in there but like uh 
the Gusta was more about food, it was more about all the restaurants in the city, like in the countryside, everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> You bet, and I'm not exaggerating, like people do this for comedy, I don't. I don't have the screenshots because I changed my phone, but I would I would literally fall asleep like at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., better than up all nighters fighting with my ex, so uh, I don't regret it. Um, <laughs> I would stay up till 3 a.m. scrolling like on food, what, uh, reading reviews of restaurants and um, <laughs> like uh, saving up like the recipes, writing them on notes. Every time I go to a restaurant, I just write on notes. Like I take pictures of the menu, like they give me, and I write like next time that I come here, <laughs> and then I never go back because like, <laughs> my friends are not that available. Um, but I just get so excited. I get food is something that I get passionate about, <laughs> and so I would stay up. Like that's a really good investment. That's a really good investment of investment of your time. Like you're 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 investing on the stuff that you will eat like you gotta know what kind of quality of food you're getting <laughs> no but seriously um i uh, i used apps like that as i said like it's all about your happiness if it doesn't make you happy out and go search for another one i remember that before pinterest what i used to use was we hearted i loved we hearted so much it was all about cute pictures inspiration it should be wholesome this can be wholesome <laughs> also what i love about social media is saving stuff like more than liking stuff i love saving stuff and actually um according to instagram's like new um i don't know they did something in there uh but saving like the little box in there that you tap that's more powerful than a like now because I think they figured that when you like stuff, you're you're doing it mindlessly, like I said. So now they're more like, hey, if that person, if that user is saving up something, it means that they will go back to the app to go look at it as reference. Or it means that they took the time to read it and they find this post worthy of keeping. Which, it makes sense. It's smart to give more power to saving than liking. So yeah, la uh, save stuff so that, you know, your content creators, they, they get more exposure. And also save stuff so that, um, so that you can, it's all, it's so cool. It's like with uh, my animalist and other types of, you know, these recording, like keeping up with statistics of like Spotify like the wrap-up that Spotify does like it's such a hit of nostalgia or the amount of videos that you liked ever since you joined YouTube like all of that it's, it's just there and you can see like the history and the evolution of the stuff that you're into like start saving stuff <laughs> not only in like making your own memories and saving them and snapchat memories but also save the article save all that stuff like just keep it somewhere use those features more than using the robotic you know the already mechanized features that we've always used like that's how i love using social media and that's you know you're using it right because you're you're having something worthy of like saving and keeping for the rest of your life <laughs> it's something that you would want to look back on it's something useful probably so yeah make sure that your con the content that shows up is worth saving <laughs> instead of just liking you'll be jumping from aesthetic to aesthetic to aesthetic and you'll be you know you'll just You'll, you'll never be satisfied. You'll always be changing. But if you work with something that isn't out there, that doesn't have a role model, that doesn't have a whole community in it, the, the only person that is designing that and making that is you. The only person that is promoting this looks is you. Then, like, you can't get bored of it. I've realized, and this happens with music as well, like the most complex songs, it takes a time for you to actually like them. But when you build up that taste, it's hard to get tired of them than when you see the same generic song from that genre that maybe you love, but eventually just want to go find something different. Even if it's the more it takes time for you to like it, the more it takes time for you to dislike it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, next time you think something is ugly, back to what I said, it's interesting. It's different, not ugly. <laughs> and so yeah, it was like, this is sort of like a trap. It sounds a bit creepy, but it's sort of like a trap. Like, you can only post this stuff related. It's not that anyone is forcing you, but it's like, if it doesn't go with the aesthetic, it almost seems like it's ugly. Like, you start convincing yourself. Like, because you see so many things that are similar to that thing, you start making up your own structure of what's beautiful, what's aesthetic. And then anything that goes against that, it doesn't belong there. So therefore, it's not worthy of posting. And I've never gotten any negative feelings, especially from Pinterest, because as I told you, like, I love it. It gives me so much inspiration which I think is 
what you should get from social media. <laughs> we should all share skills, we should all share hacks, secrets, advice, like good stuff for everyone. Like, like you're passing the salt around the table, you know? But I started thinking, not in a bad way, like I started analyzing it, like, why are these more beautiful or why I why do I crave these? My my bedroom is pretty in its own way. In my bedroom, my 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 bedroom can also go in like in a post. I can make my bathroom go in a post in there like just because it doesn't look the same like if everyone thought that their stuff was not aesthetic enough to post then they wouldn't be there. They wouldn't be part of the catalog because that's what Pinterest is. It's a it's a world uh, like a huge catalog of all of these similar things of articles with the same thing like photos of a bathroom like in many and I was like I don't see my bathroom anywhere in there and I was like oh my gosh that's such a good thing it means it's unique but at the same time I was like it just takes me to post it so that it becomes one of those and it doesn't mean that it looks the same as all of them it's, it doesn't mean that those are cookie cutters it doesn't mean that those have a specific structure because I was like the reason why I crave for my backyard to change so much is because all of these ideas look so different than one another and I was like if I post mine it will become another one of them and it fits because it's different because it's another type of beautiful so I was like yeah that's that's the thing that happens with all of our stuff it is different it is it's it's aesthetic on its own so like I think that's the kind of aesthetic that we should all strive for an aesthetic that is not like imprisoning to you or that doesn't uh, keep you in uh, you know those same four walls because like everything you do as long as it looks pretty like everything like this wall like this uh, background can be just as pretty like it's all it takes is for me to post it, and then someone else that's scrolling would be like oh my gosh I wish that was my bedroom but then they that's the thing with Pinterest I never had one thing to compare myself with when meanwhile and like it, perhaps in other types of social media like you would have that same person that you would compare yourself to no in here i didn't compare in here I, I craved absolutely everything and i was like you know what if i got that bedroom i would be drooling for that other bedroom that i would see because every time i scroll i scroll i scroll i see so many beautiful things i cannot decide because all of them are equally beautiful in different ways that's what keeps me in the app that they are different because i don't get tired of looking at it because every single option is different than the other one so in our difference is that is the aesthetic in a way so i was like you know what work with your bedroom Make it your own type of beautiful. That's why my bedroom doesn't match with each other. Cause I don't like, I, I yeah, it looks coherent. It looks co cohesive, uh, but it's like when you don't match, you have freedom and you can put whatever you want in there. And you have one side that is this aesthetic. You have another side that is, but you know what they all have in common in being aesthetic, they're beautiful. And I guess that's the point of it, right? The looks, but like the looks that you choose, that you enjoy, that you adore. Because if I just go to one aesthetic only, like gamer, Japanese type of vaporwave, I don't know, then I'll be craving that cottagecore life. And then when I get tired of seeing all mushrooms and think of that cottagecore life, I'll go to dark academia. And after I'm sick of dark academia, I'll go to, you get what I mean? So it's like, you have to make yourself, yet yeah, romanticize, your own thing because like it's cool belonging somewhere like as i said but like you can get tired of the community you can get tired of posting the same stuff being repeated uh re like posting repeatedly like i've seen accounts that are like hey i want to try this more like i want to mix it up i want to spice it up uh do you, you do you think you guys would like that and like i wouldn't ask for permission first of all i love you but it's like <laughs> it's my account but <laughs> i wouldn't ask for permission in the sense but like i understand what they mean because it's like once you post something else people people are like what but this doesn't this doesn't this shouldn't be here this no yes it can be here all of it can be here all at once so yeah don't trap yourself in an aesthetic you see i love me some aesthetic looking things in the sense that they're pretty but like and i love aesthetics like i actually started my own aesthetic account because i was like i don't know about that once again another friend told me oh my gosh you're so good at school and i was like cottage core cottage core what's cottage core and like the half of the words that i don't know the language of but i still use the words <laughs> in context in which they don't belong to um i try to search them up and i search it up and i found out what cottage core was and i was like oh my gosh yeah my, my pictures fit so much in that in that thing and uh i made an account and i was like oh my gosh it's a whole community and stuff and i don't know i don't like 
belong into communities that much because then whatever fame the community gets and that's the fame that I get so I don't like calling myself I don't like labeling myself that's what I'm trying to say but I was like if I want to get an audience I have to use the hashtags it's like right right here like I wish I could have more weird titles but then nobody would be able to search for what I'm doing so so you gotta you gotta compromise a little with the structure you gotta be a little cookie cutter cookie cutter Christmas <laughs> you gotta be a little cookie cutter sometimes for the sake of later on being free <laughs> so but yeah like i got into the thing and i made so many cute uh online friends and i'm very happy about that but that's for another video the thing is that um i i at some point i wanted to post other stuff that also made me happy because i've never been like in a in an aesthetic like my pictures are aesthetic because they they look pretty but it's not like i put the same filter or the same font or the same colors or the same shade like i don't think of it too much because then it's like it's like you're limiting yourself which is what i was trying to say like you you fit onto this and then you get bored and you want to go to something else they would teach us stuff in like informatics class and i would i would they they taught us how to make a blog and i made a blog about dogs and i made a blog about like my history going to the to like Boston Children's Hospital and all that kind of stuff and that uh, I, 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 I took a picture of my nails they were ugly they were like this yeah but even worse like I, I chew all over the place don't ask me I'm a, I, I kind of get nervous it it traces back to stuff from the past but the thing is that it stuck with me that habit stuck with me and I was like today my nails grew a little more and I was like you don't even have an audience you're already talking about yourself yeah it's sort of what I'm doing right now but I don't know has the formula worked not really but i i, I hope it works someday <laughs> so like i was i was using it was so wholesome it's what i'm trying to tell you it's like i come here i can show you the pictures i wouldn't feel embarrassed nobody should they should they should make it like yeah make everything cute make you make your setups i love making setups all the time it's so therapeutic to decorate stuff but like do it for you <laughs> you know have fun with it and i made i was the only one that actually made the blog everyone thought it, i was lame for that but like sometimes when you listen to your teachers you can get stuff that you can apply to your life sometimes and how mr rogers says says in his song sometimes isn't always <laughs> so yeah but I, I i had fun and that's another type of social media like you should start a project use social media as a project especially right now like you know, like, as I said, like, grab some passion that you have, go make something out of it. Like a podcast, go, I don't know. Like, I used to use social media and nobody wanted to see my post because, like, the first time I got Snapchat, I didn't know about social media at all. I just got my first friend. Uh, she, she introduced me to Snapchat. She introduced me to... Uh, all that like culture of celebrities like uh, Taiga um, that was dating Kylie Jenner and all that kind of stuff and uh, Kanye and uh, I didn't know who the heck Kanye was I just knew that there was a song that said I wanna be like Kanye so um, but yeah like uh, you know but I love snapchat right away because it had uh, sugar pop sugar uh, sugar food insider I think it had like three three things that were about news based on food and that's why I stick to it because otherwise I didn't see the point obviously because I didn't follow anyone I didn't know how Snapchat worked but what I knew is that I could do snaps and I would go outside in the backyard and I would take a bunch of pictures of the sky like a thousand pictures of the same thing of like nature and I was like and, and my friend was like oh my god you post so much like why do you do that blah, blah, blah. and I was like but aren't you supposed to like take pictures of stuff like no you post pictures of where you go out what you eat you post pictures of yourself and you look pretty and I was like ah and then I kept on taking pictures of like little things that I saw everywhere <laughs> so um I'm very stubborn um but it made me happy I, I didn't I didn't know that you could check who looked at your story and I didn't care <laughs> I was like um I didn't expect anyone to reach till the end of my post I was posting that for myself because I I was like oh my gosh today I saw all of these pretty things I want to keep them all in here obviously there was not snapchat memories back then but I don't know I wanted to do that I thought those were my, the highlights of my day and uh yeah I, it was like me sharing I, I didn't know that you had to perform or you had to stage something I didn't know about that yet so 
Um, I remember when I got Instagram, I would post pictures of like screenshots of me playing games, like all these doll games and cooking games. And I would pay, I would post pictures of my cafeterias. I was like around sixth grade, uh, fifth grade. <laughs> My first ever picture of myself was me with bangs. They looked awful, cause like right now my hair is relaxed. But back then it was not relaxed. So it was super frizzy. It was super like fluffed up, but in a bad way. Like not a good fluffy, okay? It was not a good fluffy. And it was like this, and it was like round. And I had, a, I had my hair tied back. <laughs> um, oh, my teeth were not fixed yet. Right now they're pretty effed up because I haven't used my retainer, but they were looking ugly as I don't have the picture anymore, but yeah, I looked I looked awful, but I, it still makes me happy. I, I'm dying to find the picture because I want to show you, because it's like, this is the type of confidence that, not confidence, it's just that I didn't, I, 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 what, what, I didn't care, I was fine with it. I would post absolutely anything that I found. My pictures were not aesthetic at all, um, but like, and I was in a, in a, in a, I was in a swing, I remember, I was in a swing, I was so happy because like, I didn't know how to swing properly and that day I guess I was like swinging much better and I had a marshmallow in here and I was like popping it out. I think you can see it in my, tra in my trailer of my channel, I've done that before, like I have the, the marshmallow popping out, my two donkey teeth popping out, my awful hairstyle, my huge cheeks because I was way more stuffy back then chubby, uh, and I was so happy with it. I was so happy with how it turned out. It was like, take a picture. And she was like, wait, you're not gonna post that right there, are you? And I was like, I already did. Look, 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 I got my social media. Uh, she was a little bit controlling, but whatever. I guess she was trying to protect my image or whatnot. I don't care. Um, it made me very happy. I I, even, I remember I saw in like in the internet, I saw a gummies bra and I took, I saved the image and I posted it in my Instagram. And I was like, why are you posting my like a gummy gummy bra oh my gosh i posted a lot of questionable stuff oh and my yeah i had like very bad um eye, eye bags um back then so yeah it was a very chaotic picture for her she was she almost she almost fainted she took the social media stuff very seriously i didn't know about it uh until now do you ask me if i regret knowing about social media i think not no, but like I was fine without it, you know. <laughs> but I think it's cool because like then I got to make art, art stuff. Love doing documentation, especially because I can do them at home. Like I don't have to go somewhere cool, or I don't have to, you know, arrange it, touch it up too much. Like it's just a compilation of good moments because they were good moments, um, and they're like a little bit of that moment. It's not one picture representing a whole moment when actually that whole moment uh, could could have gone to hell like very quick. But um, yeah, we should all make more documentations to look back on um, in case we have like Alzheimer or something like that. Uh, but yeah, um, you should you should treat social media like a journal what you want to see, what you want to feel. And you can't compare journals, definitely. They're very, very personal to each and every one of us. And journals are raw, and journals are ours, and they're true. They keep true to themselves. So, yeah. That's just how I like using social media to not only make art, like I don't make art for making art. I just make my stuff and I call it art. I don't, I don't try to make it more beautiful. I already think it is beautiful enough to be portrayed out there. I think it is enough. <laughs> don't you think yours is enough too? <laughs> I think uh, romanticizing your life is great, but like sugarcoating stuff, when you know that stuff is not okay, I don't think that's too good for you. So like what I love doing, cause like you know that we only see one highlight of the day and then a lot of other stuff happens, which is why I like to call my days hybrid days because they can start out good, they can get better in the middle, and then they can get even worse than they were in the morning by nighttime. Or the opposite. They can start out awful, you can keep the day being awful, and you can think that, you know, you just want to go to sleep. And then by nighttime, everything changes. I don't know, maybe it's just the power of power naps, which is why they're called power naps. 
um, they just change everything. Boom. <laughs> like instead of sleeping 10 hours a day when you're feeling sad, you should do power naps. You can do like many power naps, like one power nap an hour or a certain amount of time. It's like you can search it up. They're very good for you, especially for creativity, like feeling better, mood boost and energy. Uh, yeah. But like you can do documentations, which is what Haley Rains does. She does a lot of, they're kind of spontaneous in the sense that you don't have to make every anyone like pose or repeat a certain action or joke. Like you don't have to force anyone. Like my favorite types of pictures are the ones in which I'm not intrusive to anyone in the sense that like they're spontaneous, they're natural. Like I love it. I love to keep those moments. They're raw. They're like catching little Pokemons. Um, of seconds of someone else doing something without noticing um it's like uh filming a little part of something that you're doing and then not filming anything at all and then you put all of that together and that's like documentation i think that's how i can describe it uh it's 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 very cool i love doing those especially with music but i cannot do that in youtube because then i would get copyrights obviously but in instagram i do it all the time with songs of sleeping at last this is my favorite um a uh, song songwriter uh, and a singer. Uh, it's so wholesome. You have to listen to the Sleeping at Last podcast. It's it, it. He describes the origins of every song that he has with his little daughters, and it's so cute. Like it's so it's so wholesome. He's like independent, and he has his own instruments and his own little mistakes in there. Even his daughters, like they were playing the piano, and there's like little sounds of that, sounds of whales that he recorded when he went in a trip to Hawaii. Like, there's so much behind his songs, you know, inside the song itself, like both like instrumentally and meaningfully, symbolically in the lyrics. So you should you should check him out. <laughs> I think that there is something very very wholesome, very important that nowadays a lot of people use and bring it up just to roast. Like, even ourselves, like, ourselves, like, we bring it up to roast it. But I think it shouldn't be that way. I think it... It... I think... I think it should be held in such a part of our hearts. Like, it should be held high. Because it is so, um, so meaningful. Like, I don't judge... Uh, like, no, this is not a negative. I'm just saying for people that can still save their accounts, it's like... When you have old stuff, you can just make up a new account. But like, don't delete that account on, or don't start in that old account and delete all your old posts. Like, no, that's where you come from. That's, that's your beginning. And that that is so beautiful. Like, it's not cringy. I swear, to, I swear to everything, it's not cringy. It's the most beautiful thing you can keep. It's like a treasure with how you were, like how you are. It's, it's who you are. It's who you are at best. It's your inner child. It's, you know, it's the first beginnings of social media. Like when you, you weren't even aware. That's the thing. When you lacked self-awareness, that's when you were your truest self. And I wouldn't want to forget about who I was before knowing, before having, I don't know, character awareness or self-awareness or whatever other type of self-consciousness. Like a side of a internet persona. Like your whole personality, like who you truly are, like the videos that you have about you alone or the videos that you have um, from when you were just getting started, you know, like um, your old movies that you used to make, old karaoke videos that you used to make, all of that, you have to treasure it and cherish it, not put it out there in the public in a video to roast it. I mean, if you're making comedy, I mean, that's cool, but they, they, it's, it's Inherently, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to be embarrassed of. Embrace it. It's amazing. It's a little treasure. It's so unique and nobody has that but you. Because I just get so excited. I just get so happy. It's not a phase. Don't push it back. Don't try to separate yourself from it. Pull them. All of them are inside you. Like, this is how you became to be this. That's your original self. Your uncorrupted self. Unfiltered. Unwashed self. I think that's the best thing that we can hold on to instead of trying to make new versions of ourselves to fit something. Um, even if we're having fun with it, like, don't, don't erase it. Don't try to be someone else than that. Like, embrace that, keep it, hug it, show it, 
with happiness and be joyful about still having that recorded, like taped. Also, social media use accounts, um, like be helpful, do relevant stuff, like do stuff that makes you be creative or that makes you actually participate in something, be part of something bigger than yourself, than, you know, your own pictures or whatever it is that you're putting out there. Like you could write a review, you could sum up a bunch of songs and put them in a playlist. You know, people who write descriptions on their playlist, I love you. Essays, video essays, like be creative with it. Like do something more than yourself. Um, it, it makes you feel good to be part of something that like, and it also makes you reach more people because like you find it's the same energy. Everyone's like focused, everyone's passionate about the same thing, you know? Um, seriously, uh, right. Uh, writing reviews, it doesn't only make you, like, wake up all of those emotions and feelings that the movie or the book made you feel, but it makes you connect with other people that feel the same way about that film or about that thing, or if they're new to it, like, you would, you would enlighten them with all of these new things that you know that you love. Just that likes or something so robotic and automatic inside of us like even if you don't actually like something you'll just like it because like you're just scrolling like you're you're it's like mechanical memory like your muscle memory yeah you just you just do that with it it's so mindless and even especially if you have friends and stuff like they will tell you you're pretty even if they don't think you're pretty because like you're supposed to you're supposed to lift each other up like because uh, like your friends right it, that's the normal thing to do because everybody comments uh, in the bottom of a selfie so why would why wouldn't you um no no that 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 thing has to change like we cannot be complimenting people just because because then then people are just posting stuff to get validation when they're not they're not actually like you gotta I mean like it can get to a point in which anything you post you'll get praised for it and i'm not saying that you have to be negative it's just that how real is that praise if you are already meant to get that by default? You know what I mean? Mm. In the sense that they will say that to a thousand other people on the daily. I'm not saying that you have to be the only one. I don't know if you get my point. Like, it's that they don't actually like your stuff. It's just that, that that's what they're accustomed to see. Like, oh, I saw a girl in a bikini. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna like it. Because, like, oh my gosh, she's having the best time of her life. Like, you don't even know. Like, you don't even ask this person. Like, oh, how were your vacations in Maldives? Like, no, you just start comparing yourself. You just start, like, it's, it's all about it. It's so, and at the same time, it is so empty. Like, it is so mindless. Like, ba bum phew. Oh, you get it? Like, I don't want that. I don't want that kind of. I don't want that kind of relationship with my friends or with the people that are around me. Like, if you're hyping me up, like, hype me up for real. Don't hype me up because you hype. That's what you do in an app. It's like you're you're acting exactly like the app wants you. Like I don't I don't know if I'm making any sense right now. Oh my god, um, but yeah, it's like, oh my gosh, I never thought you would ha use a hair dye like that. But don't just jump to tell me that it looks gorgeous. Like like whoa, where where did the idea come from? Uh, did your parents let you like um uh, th th even all that conversation? Like I know it's not made for that because it's supposed to be fast like fast food fast food is good it's uh, it's bad for you it's bad for you i mean it's good because like dopamine and stuff and like yeah we as users we get dopamine from like you know that interaction that that stuff like i get it too um but it's like how 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 there are we when we are liking stuff like the action of liking um but yeah so like don't don't value and also another thing like if you're a content creator of any sort like this is a hard one this is a hard one and i know it myself like i'm not gonna be a hypocrite but like at the end of the day this is a hard truth i i see many people that have like a thousand views or a thousand subscribers but like honestly what's your watch time <laughs> It's so funny because like the things that matter the least to other people, like the stuff that they take to judge whether or not you're doing a good job are the least that matters. Like likes, comments, those don't matter. Um, 
what matters is it's the watch time literally how much do people stay on the app but like you know the regular consumer doesn't know about this so they will just be like oh that channel sucks or you know they will judge it because it doesn't have a certain amount of um likes but it's like the engagement of the people especially instagram all of these accounts that you want to make something out of them if you have 10 people but the, the 10 out of 10 they talk to you in the DMs, they ask you stuff in the stories, they react to your posts, they do something beyond, you know? They, they stick with you, they stay with you, like it's something you got them, like you did this on your own. It's not just an app kind of structured thing that happens with another account, it's like no. Like you can have all the amount in the world, but if you do not have engagement, then you're an empty account, in the sense like, you have no audience. Like, yeah, you have an audience, but you don't have an audience. Like, the retention of them, how in interested they are in you, like being there for you, like <sighs> the engagement is everything. And I know that this word is used a lot in like analytics and like business stuff and like trying to get, no, but I, I mean engagement in a very, very serious personal way. Like your little family, your little community, that's what you should value the most like the fact that they're there the same ones of always yes the same five but it's not like you have 10 people and only two of them actually you know they participate in your stuff like that sucks that's like having nobody so yeah next time you look at your i don't know your reports your analytics your insights and instagram like don't feel bad <laughs> worry what you have but like cultivate what you have already instead of going for other other people like i wouldn't want like of course if i want to make money out of this i have to blow up but i wouldn't want that because like first of all i cannot delete my subscribers like i can't control who watches and who doesn't watch my instagram which i like that because as soon as i realize that there's an account that is following me and they are not following up <laughs> like they're not keeping up with me out like i don't need to i don't need the number i'd rather have 50 then had 100 and like half of them don't have anything to do with me and I don't have anything to do with them like even if they have something to do with me and I don't have anything to do with them I also don't want to waste their time because if I don't care about you and you don't care about me it's, it's a vague it's a, it's like a bot I feel like a fraud I feel like I'm being lied to or like I'm lying to them because like there's nothing here there's no bonding that's just how I feel <laughs> and I know that eventually I'll need to have a bunch of strangers and a bunch of unknown people like way more unknown than you guys that watch me <laughs> um but until then i think that um and if you can control the people the type of people that you have who you have to see them as a person like with their name instead of like a number i think that's great and that's what you should focus on and that's what should motivate you it's hard but it's real it's organic like a little plant it, it grows and sometimes it dies and you have to, well, I tried growing plants this quarantine, all of them died. I was expecting to get yellow blooming flowers and I didn't get them. But I can try next summer. But yeah, like focus on stuff that you don't, you don't have that much interaction with like your social, social circle. Cause like, if you wanted to be social, just go out with them. Like you don't have to, you don't always have to be updated about their lives. Like it was just better back then when we had phones, like, I don't know, like telephones and you would ask you would actually ask what the day is like there was this commercial or something like or a short film it was about that it was making fun of someone because like uh, a, a girl was dating someone but they said he's like a ghost because he had no social media he didn't post the food that he was eating where he was going at with at which, which hour or like you know he didn't have any information out there so he, you actually had to text him like hey what what were you up to because like people are people don't usually do that anymore because they already see all of your status updates they already see all of your stories so it's like what am i gonna ask i already know that it's your birthday i already know that your cake looked um this this and that like you already know all the details so there's not that curiosity for like you know oh what did you do today honey um you know like all that um because then like passive i don't know if this is something like <laughs> like i don't know i just saw the concept passive income now i'm trying to do youtube but now i'm throwing in the word passive like it's like it doesn't mean anything sexual because it does but <laughs> you gotta use like passive social media if that's a thing because like it shouldn't be because it's about interaction and stuff um uh 
But what I found is that the apps that I use the most that make me feel super, 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 super good are Pinterest and YouTube. And this is because the feed, the feed is all about what you subscribe to. It's all about, and like, I mean, it's like that with everything. But the thing is that I'm not following people that I know in YouTube or I'm not following people in general in Pinterest. Like I'm just making little lists. Like I'm collecting little pins of the stuff that I love. Imagine having an app that has thousands of things of the stuff and the topics that you love. And every time you open the app, your homepage is full of all that sweetness and all that good stuff. You know, it's nothing about X person with your another person and your, uh, you know, people that you don't like and that just make you feel awful because you're not doing anything with your life. You're not doing anything with your life. You're not living your life like they're living their lives. Yeah. So um, what you can do is, uh, you know, make your home feed a bunch of doggies, puppies. Everybody loves puppies. Um, get that serotonin, dopamine, Dope them with, with the food. Uh, make your homepage food and puppies. And you'll never cry about social media ever again. I can guarantee. <laughs> Nicole Rafi said it best in one of her videos that was about unfollowing people, but I'm telling you to delete your own followers. Um, but she said it best, out of sight, out of mind. Out of sight, out of mind. And I just repeated that for myself and it has worked because you know those people that you you unfollow them, but you still haven't deleted them from your own followers. You feed in onto that. Like you want them to see your stuff. You want them to, you want to check. Like it, 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 be free, like free yourself. Not only from you seeing their stuff, but from them seeing your stuff. Cause then you're like, ah, oh, yeah, I want to show off. Or I want to prove something unconsciously. Cause I'm not, I'm personally, or I try not to be like that. But then I realized, wait, you have not yet deleted them. You haven't gotten rid of them of your life, of your stuff. You have to do it because otherwise you won't be free. Like you're still posting them and you say that you're posting it for yourself, but no, you're posting them for them to get a reaction, even if you're not going to know it any like even if you're not gonna know it uh directly because they will not tell you anything but you're like ah uh, yeah like you know like your mind does some stuff your mind does some stuff and it's not healthy at the end of the day because then your account belongs to someone else and that's the worst thing that can happen you need to do all everything you do that you put out there you gotta do it for yourself because it has to come out inside from you not from external factors that you want to impress or make feel worse or whatever other feeling that you want to call on someone because then it's not going to be yours it's not going to be your time it's going to be their time and you don't want that because <laughs> it, it 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 means nothing if you unfollow them but you don't delete them too from seeing your own stuff <laughs> so i mean you can just delete people instead of blocking them if you're submissive and shy like me, um, <laughs> how am I gonna be a lawyer like this? I need to get an attitude, cause I do have it. It's just that I don't wanna use it against that one person, but I should. Hmm, hmm. Grrr. But um, you gotta get the grrr, grrr. Like, lo-fi community. This is for you. Why? Because I've seen that even the food community is kind of um. I kind of have their little wars in the comment section. I don't know why it's freaking food. Enjoy it, eat it. Let's all drool for something collectively. Why would you fight about the name, about the recipe, about the origins? No, 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 no. Food is food. Let we shall eat. Because like you can keep on arguing. I will go and, and eat that stuff. Like I don't care, <laughs> honestly. Um. But uh, this is this is this trophy. This trophy deserves the lofa. Like the lofa community deserves this award for being so freaking wholesome, dude. There's even like like kind of like comment. Like there's comment people types. The, there's like the first type, which is the one that says, "Oh, take care of yourself." Blah blah blah. Like drink water. And I say blah 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 because they say a lot of wholesome stuff. It does, I cannot I cannot say it myself. Like. It's just so much. Um, but yeah, blah, 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 get your A, 
glasses of water, blah, 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 stop procrastinating. We will make this, we will make it together. Well, those are the cheerleaders and the mamas because they they act like the mamas out there. Like they're like, they kind of scold you, but they scold you with love. It's like, hey, what you doing here? You should be, go back to your homework. And that, I think that's so cute. I think that's so cute. Or maybe I'm just a masochist. But that, the second type is the type that tells you your dreams. They tell you, they tell you what, what they will love to do. They tell you, like they reminisce and they tell the memories and stuff. And they just, they start, they're like, they, they put the fantasy onto you. Like this song brings me to X landscape with Y, C, E, blah, 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 blah. And it's so dreamy, it's so dreamy, it makes you dream with them. Then the third type of uh, commenting person, by the way, a shout out for everyone who comments, cause I personally, me and likes, we don't up, like I don't like them cause they're so impersonal. It's like, it's it's a robotic thing. And my social experiment really confirms that. It's, it's just, it's automatic. Like it's not even like you don't even think about it twice but like a comment you take the time and that comment only goes for that one person for the post that they made like it's so personal it's so one-to-one -one. it's so about you i'm just a narcissist i don't know it could be both but yeah like thank you for taking your time and commenting on videos it's it really lifts me off like that's what keeps you going not the likes not the numbers i mean maybe to other people not for me like what keeps me going is the comments like but yeah um like the the third or fourth is the one that starts they, they make you feel not alone it's not negative they just they talk about the bad stuff the ugly stuff they open up it's vulnerable it's vent time and i love i love me some then time that i can relate to that i can cheer up because then you get to you know wish them good you get to talk to them personally because you know their situation because they're opening up with you a random stranger in the internet like that's just so see that's just so wholesome it's not even like negative vibes it's just so cute it's like it's like they feel safe in in, in that little playlist and they say their own connections to the song, the, the background to the song when they used to listen it with their ex or their passed away grandpa, like, it's all so cute. Oh, it makes you wanna cry. But <laughs> the, the fourth or fifth, I did summer school in math, guys. Like, don't get, don't, don't come at me for this. But the other one is the one that they start talking about uh, they, 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 they address the community. They address the community and they're like, we should all hang around, we should all be friends. Like, I want to be friends with the whole comment section. Let's all have a party. Let's all unite together in a reunion. I'm just mixing words that sound the same because I think they mean the same thing, but actually they don't. I mean, they sort of do. <laughs> and they make, you feel, they make you feel part of a family. And then there's the one that starts writing, oh, my favorite one. They start writing points of views, like pops. Like, it's like um, YN, but less dirty. <laughs> it's like, you're walking in a Christ like I've seen it way more often in like Christmas themed uh, lo-fi stuff. Um, they start talking about you being in a new city or you having everything going well for you, but like very descriptive, like a whole story. They make poetry, they make stories, they write up, uh, they make up their own little things so that you feel inside of those scenarios that they put. And it's, Chef's Kiss is just beautiful, it's just so cute, it's just so warm and fussy, so Christmassy. Um, I love it so much. So yeah, you should all join the lo-fi community which has a very bad rap because people think i don't know people think it's cringe or something like they hate on it for no reason which is why i hate cringe because it's like it's so trendy to to feel cringe towards stuff to to roast other people like no don't be mean like just just come over here we want to hug you we want to a brief pause because my ex is annoying um just kidding i would be crying if he didn't call me <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, why am I like this? I'm stubborn. I'm, I'm hurting myself. I should stop and get some help. No, I should stop and get some food. Cause like food is the only therapy. Um, actually looking at myself right now, you know, you know what I was thinking? You know what I was thinking? Um, no, no, I'm not saying that this is my case, but like, if this is your case, if you're ugly, you shouldn't feel sad about that. And we're talking about social media. So like, you shouldn't be sad about that because 
you know, if you were picture perfect, like everything you did, it would be super beautiful and stuff. No, we don't want that. Like that's just boring. You get a costume to that face and then another younger face comes by and you're not the spotlight anymore. But you know, memes, what are memes made of? Ugly faces. So, <laughs> no, seriously, like they transmit a message. No, the, so many messages at once just fit into one face. Can you believe that? That's just, that's, that's amazing. That's power. That's power. You think that your sex appeal is power? No, no, no. I'm sorry. That's old fashioned. Ugliness is the power. Like, I got the power. Again, I'm not saying this is my case. I'm just saying that this is your case. Like, I just wanted to cheerlead, to be your cheerleader, to cheer you up, to comfort you, because you don't need no comforting, okay? It's so fun. Cause like you can make your friends happy. You can just do any any face or you can just not do anything on purpose. And like, you know, naturally you're just not photogenic. And actually you are photogenic, but in another way. You're photo photogenic in an ugly way, which makes for lots of different ugly faces. Like here I may look like a parrot. Here I may look like a witch. You know what I, it's not my case. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, people have compared me to a uh, blue Mm hmm so um but you know I, I it's not an offense it's like take people's mockery as joy people are happy people are happy unless they're beaches then uh, punch them in the face um but what I'm trying to say is that you shouldn't feel bad about feeling ugly like the uglier you are the uglier you are the more unique you are and if somebody finds you attractive let's think of it this way a person that is attractive by default you know, eventually that loses its value because it's like, ah, oh, yeah, another hot person. But uh, uh, like, like an ugly person is like, what? It, it, it causes more, it stirs stuff up like a, like a milkshake or something. Cause it's like, what? Like people disagree, people agree. It's like a whole war for you. As if you were a king or a queen or whatever, like, isn't that, isn't that amazing? Like a, a whole world war just based on your face? Like it, it causes that much discussion, controversy. Being ugly is 10 times better. Like every single face you do is a new face. But like the faces of cute people, we've seen them everywhere. We're sick and tired of it, come on. You gotta say you're sick and tired of it. We're sick and tired of it. Like we've seen it in all magazine covers. Every single commercial is the same. Like I don't even care about buying the product anymore. Seriously, like. You gotta hype yourself up for being, for having different features that are not asymmetric because that makes for being everybody's cheerleader. So you're gonna have more friends than beautiful people. I'm just kidding, that's not how it works, but that's how it should work. That's how it should work. At least that's how it works in the internet. So, and I'm an internet person right now. So I think that counts for something. <laughs> um, no, but seriously. Um, no, this is not a joke. Like, actually, I was thinking about it, and I was like, every single person looks the same. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, th I already know, like, yeah, she's gonna be pretty. But when you see someone else, it's like, whoa, but wait. And it's like so many mixed feelings, because it's like, no, 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 no. Like, I can't even have enough crush on him. Like, what? Look at him. But it's like, oh my gosh. And all of a sudden, to the morning, to the, like, we've seen this stuff on movies. Oh my god, he's kind of pretty. Yeah, he is. And then when other people start desiring him, the other person starts desiring him too. And it's like, it's like, it's like... It's good. It's good. Being ugly is good. So, um, you know, next time you see a supermodel, who cares about you doing exercise to look like her? No, no. Embrace the ugliness. Okay? It's, it's, it gives you confidence. Because, like, you accept it. Yes. I'm an ugly fuck and <laughs> I'm gonna own it. Like you're gonna make people laugh. Like joy lasts way more than, I cannot talk about that in camera. No, actually joy doesn't last. Both of them, I think both of them are the same amount. Um, unless, Ugh, my rinks are so disgusting, whatever. But anyway, um, <laughs> if I tear up, yeah, don't get uncomfortable. I mean, I got dumped, like, come on. Oh, by the way, I got dumped! I got dumped, I got dumped, I got dumped. So like, if you wanna, I wanna. Mm -hmm. You gotta see the positive, you gotta see the bright, and it's Christmas time. Like, I'm not gonna be like one of those Christmas movies in which everybody's depressed, cause like, yeah, she left me last Christmas. Oh, so well, you gotta celebrate. Um. <coughs> 
I can be um, your Santa Claus. You know, all the gifts that I can give you. Well, anyway, as I was saying, we were talking about social media, right? So a trick for Spotify, it's not a trick, it's not a hack. I bet everybody knows that. I love making playlists now, like now that I have premium, I love making playlists and well, no, 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 it's not that I, well, yeah, because like when, if I have premium, like I can listen to exactly the one that I want. Yeah, the one that I want. Yeah, the one that I want. Mm -mm. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, but seriously, like, I was, I was, <laughs> I can't share my Spotify because it's so messy. Like, I can't make a new account. I just had so many years, so many years without premium that, um, like, I, uh, I made thousands of playlists with the same song in it because that's what you have to do like if you do not have premium yet um what you have to do is that you put the same song over and over and over and over and over again because like yeah you can make a playlist of just that one song but then you you get the risk or you get the it could be the chance that um spotify won't play that song or once it plays it then next it will play another song so you're gonna make a playlist with like 10 times the same song added in there so that's what i've done and it's kind of confusing every time because people are like you know i see all of these other accounts and they have their playlists all fucking all all aesthetic all cute all you know it's pretty it's pretty well done um and it's like oh my gosh it would be so so nice to have that but like do you look at my bed yeah so i called him and i was like Miguel, 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 Miguel. i got the fly and it was like oh my and back then I didn't have a phone so like it's not that I could send him pictures of the thing but I wanted to send pictures of the thing oh my god I was I was so excited I was so happy it was a big day for me okay like I remember it until now it was a huge day um <laughs> with a coke bottle the day I trapped a uh, fly I, I I didn't want to let it go it was like a butterfly you know how you know kids in the movies they trap um fireflies yeah no we trap a fly so <laughs> I was like teamwork finally after all this time I did it and I felt like it was such a pride for me I don't know why <laughs> I don't know why uh, we were so disgusting no wonder why nobody hung out with us I don't care I had the time of my life so um um actually this makes me feel a little bit happier about being like a loner or whatever it's not that I'm a well yeah i am but like when, when i remember stuff like this it's like i don't regret absolutely anything <laughs> like you know movies just have this structure of the kind of fun that we have at a certain age now that's not the only fun that we can have okay sometimes you can go uh drink up uh and use the bottle to catch a fly i don't have cute butterflies in my garden i don't even have a garden i don't there's no fireflies in here. Do you think I live in the forest? Is this freaking twilight? No, it's not. So what do you what do you got? You got um you got the 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 ravens. Well, they're not ravens. They're actually like cultures. Gallinazos. You got the gallinazos, or you got the flies. Which of those two are better? The talingos. The talingos. You don't even. You, I bet you haven't even seen a talingo in your life. So they're pretty disgusting. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that the fly was our best bet. So do not judge. Okay. Um. But yeah, um, and seriously, like, it's not even to like torture myself over not having those friendships anymore. No, I feel so happy. I feel so happy because it's like, this is how I used to be. I can go back to that. Like, me, me doesn't have to die. Um, I think that we are all sleeping volcanoes. Like, our fire hasn't died. We just convinced ourselves to it because there's many Instagram posts <laughs> that are very depressing, but no, our fire is still here. We're just volcanoes that are inactive right now, but we can be active again. And that's what those Snapchat memories remind me of. My goofy, <laughs> obviously obnoxious self that one day I'll get back to being super, super loud, super, super weird, super, super full of energy. Um, uh, if you think that uh, right now I'm very full of energy, then you have no idea. I think you wouldn't be able to handle me, holy. <laughs> but um, yeah, it just gives me, it just fills me up with hope. It's like, she was happy. You can be just as happy. You will be happy again that way. You will laugh again as loud and uncontrollable and laughter attacks. And you'll, you'll think that you're going to die of it. Does it actually happen? Like in, around the second grade, I had my first friend and whenever I had a friend because I didn't really have any friends which was cool by me but whenever I had a friend I will call it my best friend because um I don't know I just did and they were usually male friends because girls are uh, girls can be 
I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. At least the girls in my school. Um, and, you know, boys, especially shy boys, were the only ones that didn't say anything. Um, and they were kind of, they were fine with my company. Uh, Miguel, if you're watching this, yeah, I had a crush on you. And then he left. Oh, he was from Venezuela. And I told him once, I told, oh my God. Okay, this is like story time, okay. Like we were walking and he drew, he learned how to draw and oh my gosh. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, it's actually so many stories. I should leave that for another video. But the thing is that at that time, uh, the president, uh, it was Chavez, you know, the bad guy. And uh, <clears throat> he had to come to Panama, obviously, uh, because of the situation in his country. And I was like, with my little voice, I was like, the best thing that Chavez has done is making you come here to Panama. And he was like, oh, thank you, that's so sweet. And uh, then we kissed. No, we didn't, we never did. <laughs> um, the thing that we did in our, uh, in our recess was we used to try to catch flies. Yeah, disgusting. Uh, we were trying to catch a fly inside of a Coke bottle. So like we found something in the, in the, in the trash. We were little rats. Just me and him. I remember, I never stopped, like he left school. Um, I never stopped trying to catch the fly because we couldn't catch it when we were together in recess time. Because we have like a recess of 20 minutes only. So it was, it was, it was a very intense kind of mission. Like, okay, you go over here, I go over here. We, we surround it and then we go boop. And we're gonna like trap it with little uh, stuff that we found at the cafeteria, <laughs> like the old uh, plastic stuff, um, where it, whether it was bottles or cups or whatever, we just tried to catch the fly inside of it. I remember there was this dinner in my house. It was a regular day, and uh, I, ca I I caught it. I caught it with my with my Coke bottle, and I called him and I called his dad, and he was like, "Oh my gosh, it's you!" Because I wrote him a letter and I gave it to him when he was gonna leave, and I I think the dad and the mom wrote uh, read the letter too, so they were like, "Oh my gosh, you're Adara!" And I was like, "Yes, yes, it's me." And uh, then I was like, um, "Oh shoot, I just said my name." I can cut it out, whatever. No, actually no, my name is too beautiful to be cut out. It's just that jellyfish corpse sounds so cool. I don't know about you, I love it. <laughs> and it's also like a roleplay. So, um, yeah, I'm, 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 you can call me either way, but I think jellyfish sounds so cool. It's like, it's like I'm part of those games in which you create a little name like Avatar or whatever. And, uh, just let me live my fantasy, okay? <laughs> I know it has nothing to do with my brand because I'm fluffy and, like, jellyfishes are, uh, I don't know. Well, kind of, because they're squishy. I'm squishy. And I'm squishy. Um, but the thing is that Miguel, yeah. Uh, <laughs> whenever, um, and whenever, like, I watch some old videos of me hanging around with my friends. Oh, no, this is not because of quarantine. This was way before quarantine when we stopped hanging out either way. <laughs> uh, Ah, that's okay. That happens a lot. It's just that movies don't portray that side of, you know, uh, growing up high school and all that blah 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 stuff. Well, people change, yeah. They all of them changed and, I mean, <clears throat> they were already pretty embarrassed of me whenever we went out. But now there are more. Um, so, we kind of we drifted away from each other um, and it just makes me happy. To think that someday we can go nah it makes me happy to see myself to hear myself smiling laughing um being a <laughs> crackhead uh like i just i just see that and it's like whoa i was so happy and you know the funny thing is that when i was that happy i was very loud so i was very obnoxious to people but whenever when when i got really sad like around 2018 or something People started talking to me more, they started inviting me to their corners more because I was not being my usual goofy, weird self. Um, I was not falling from the desk of laughter. <laughs> Sometimes I think to myself, am I really a good behaved girl? That sounded so freaking... Anyway, hormones, quarantine, don't blame me. But like, am, am I like a well behaved student? Because. What if I had had a bunch of friends? What if I had been popular? Like, 
I would have never, if I don't shut up here, it's like, I know for sure that I'm not an introvert. I'm just, you know, extroverted people don't, don't, and me, they, we don't. I come to the conclusion that I am surrounded by introverts because they don't judge. <laughs> it's like, uh, I give them free company, free hugs, free everything. Oh yes, please. Um, I, I bet they're like, oh yes, please come in and uh, invade our boundaries. No, just kidding. I've never done anything <laughs> to force them or anything, but um, like I encourage them to go to the dance floor with me. Um, and it's very cute. It's very cute. It's very cute because you never see them dancing because I bet they're shy. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just assuming. And like I can dance with them and we have a fun time or maybe I'm the only one that's having a fun time. Oh my god. I'm so sorry for everybody that I have done that to. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I like being the cheerful one. I don't need anyone to be cheerful around me, but that would be nice. It would be nice to find someone like me someday. Um, no, it would be boring because I already have myself, you know? No, I don't. I don't got myself. I should. I should. I should have myself more. We should all like have ourselves more. And uh, today I'm not wearing the fake blush because I have like I don't know what these are, but they work as blush. It's like little pimples or I'm blushed. I don't know. Um, for people who have cute acne, I'm sorry. There's cute acne, so I don't know, it's just my thing. For people that have like little rashes in here, um, that it's not a sexually transmitted disease, uh, I, it's pretty cute, it looks like blush. Especially for like people that have like very sensitive skin and like it's winter time, like I've noticed like they get red here, they get red here and they get red everywhere and it's like not in a tomato red, no, no, no. Not like the car from the, from the otoyes and tomatoes and Carrots and all that. No, no, no. It's just like, it's just, it's just perfect. It's just right. It's like it fits onto their skin. I'm sorry. I don't wish acne on anyone. I'm just, I was just trying to throw a compliment in there. You know who you are. You know what I mean. It's that little trace in your cheeks, in your upper cheeks. It's very cute. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, as I was saying, um, social media per se, I use social media features. When my, uh, phone memory is till the end of its capacity like what i do is that i use snapchat um like the snapchat thing where you can store your snaps so i don't actually publish them i just save them in there and they will always be there because it's saved in the account it's not saved in my camera roll because it doesn't have any any more life to it what life it's not a battery it's not battery life it, ha it has no more it's already stuffed and unlike me when i am stuffed From all the yame, otoe, zanahoria, uh, papaya, yuca, yeah. Um, when I'm stuck from that, I, I still can manage to get some more avocados onto my system, so. But the phone, uh, yeah, the phone won't let me put more pictures in there, so I just store them there. And that's just how I feel about it. <laughs> anyway, back to the point that I was making with the social experiment, is that I posted a picture about myself and like, ooh, traveling and whatnot in the countryside of this country in the countries out of this country and I got uh, this is not even about the amount of likes I got this is about accounts that I didn't even know were following me because they were so unactive in my posts like most of the time because most of the most of the time I post a bunch of um I'm not gonna say bullshit because I'm not roasting my own stuff no like they should be the ones that get roasted for not having a taste on the stuff that I post but um I post a lot of cultural stuff because I'm not an uncultured swan okay <laughs> like um look um Saint Nicholas and stuff like I know my stuff no I actually don't I don't believe in cringe because it's like the only person that can make another thing feel awkward and feel wrong or for another person to feel humiliated or to feel like they're doing something that is um worth of ridicule ridiculely ridicule ridic rid that is ridiculous consider ridiculous um it's you like you have the power of making that of turning that situation into something cringy that's why i don't like it i don't believe in cringe culture because it it okay some things you can feel secondhand embarrassment i get it but i don't think it's like a secondhand embarrassment or like feeling for another person or having uh, compassion or feeling bad feeling pity for the other person that's making a fool of themselves like 
they wouldn't be making a fool of themselves if you weren't so critical so like what <laughs> um i feel like the secondhand embarrassment is a little bit hypercritical especially when you know it's used for uh uh comedy or whatever and i don't mean comedy like cody ko i love that guy but i meant more so I understand cringe, but at the same time I don't because it's sort of it sort of holds you back and I've seen it in a lot of people And it's not because they are shy. It's not that I'm interrupting any boundaries. No, no, no It's just that they wouldn't do it because they don't want to come off ass Cringy, what? What? Who cares? First of all, oh, do you like my uh, ta -da? it has a little pom pom. I love it <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's like Sorry, this this happens very often over here. It's a it's a car that has like vegetables in it, especially because it's quarantine. They're trying to make their coin. I'm trying to make my coin inside of my house. So <laughs> even when you have a personal account that is private and that you only accept people that are like close to you and stuff, yeah, no, they don't they don't care about you. And you will realize this in the hard way. I mean, maybe it comes off way uh, more easier if you're a writer. I call myself a writer, and I write like once every i was gonna say once every full moon but that's too ambitious because no i don't uh okay uh what was i gonna say i was gonna say something i ah yeah so i was gonna say that you should start deleting the the accounts that and this is not about giving people likes or giving people's views on their videos that they post or on the stories. No, this is that they actually do see your stuff and they ignore you. What What do I mean by this? I did a little social experiment. I started comparing the likes that I got in the pictures that were about poetry or photography or stuff that I was into or my own feelings in general. Like I don't do captions. I do in the description. I tend to go, um, I fill up the whole limit of Instagram and I just write myself. It's, it's not venting. It's actually mostly, it's like for interaction with people because they're supposed to be my friends or something. So I, I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> so like, I understand that it isn't for everyone, but Hmm. Whenever I post a picture about myself, like about my body or something, not even my body because I don't post in bikinis because I can't go swimming, so I don't really go to beach to beaches. <coughs> Either way, I have very um, a lot of beaches near me, both. And the thing is that uh, did I just make an insult with a pun? Yes, yes, I did. Um, it was very cool. You have to admit it. You know what? People hate on puns. Uh, cringe, cringe, like, I don't know if it's a thing, but like cringe culture or whatever. <laughs> I'm inventing up concepts that I don't even know about because I don't, I don't, what? Like, um, the thing is that, you know what's the best thing aside of unfollowing people that are making you feel like, well, um, deleting your own followers. Like, Joy will always fill up people's hearts. The other stuff will fill up other stuff. <sighs> oh, you should start deleting. Holy. Okay. You. You should start deleting your followers because. Not every follower that you have is actually so pa like um they don't they don't they don't care about you. It'll be like me you know like that with your huge thing. Um <coughs> anyone following accounts that make you feel <coughs> that make you feel like no I know my stuff pretty well. You should know your stuff too.